On April 20th, 2010, a powerful explosion rocks the Deepwater Horizon drilling platform in the Gulf of Mexico. It leads to what will become America's largest oil spill. 130 liters per second gush from a leak 1,500 meters below the surface, 400,000 liters per hour. 11 workers lose their lives. 115 are rescued, all suffering from shock, many with severe injuries. All efforts to save the crippled platform fail. Two days later, it sinks to the ocean floor. Dead baby dolphins on shore, raising the question, is last year's BP oil spill having lingering effects? Jack, people say this is the worst environmental disaster in U.S. history from an animal protection, an animal rescue, a survival standpoint. What do you see as the big challenges? Obviously, I'm in Louisiana, and you have some species off the coast here. You have fish, you have the birds on the shore, then you stretch all the way Alabama, Mississippi, Florida. What is the scope of the challenge here? Well, the challenge, obviously, John, is tremendous right now. If this had happened, as I've said, I think, once before, December, January, February, or March, we wouldn't probably have a third of the problem. But because, as you just said, that happens to be a migratory pattern for birds up through there. Turtles nest there. Pelicans have their eggs there. And by the way, pelicans, a state bird of Louisiana, is not going to go anywhere with eggs. It's like a, a human being with a baby sitting there. Uh, they're not going to leave that baby if somebody tells them to get out. They're going to try and take the babies with them. Obviously, they can't pick up an egg and go anywhere with it. Fish are spawning. Uh, the plankton, obviously, is affected for not just now, but for who knows how long. The manatee have been in the worst situation. And I'm not quite sure. I look behind me here. But we have manatee, six or seven manatee, in this tank here. Uh, Columbus Zoo is one of seven places in the world uh, where we rehabilitate manatee. And right now, the manatee had the worst winter in history, losing over probably around 600 manatee right now in Florida. Now they're going to come up the coast into the panhandle there. And of course, that could be a, a big disaster. So with all this put together, it just timing couldn't have been worse. It's a vicious cycle over a period of time that's going to cost a lot of animals probably their lives. That is not the no normal coloration for a bottlenose dolphin, not even for a stage four bottlenose dolphin. Um, the skin is most definitely burned, has a heavy grating into it. Uh, usually this skin would be rubbed right off if this was just a normal death like the others I've been a party and collecting of. Um, so it's been dead a long time. It's uh, turning into food for the other animals and uh, thank God it's washed ashore and it won't be food to any more animals because this is nothing that uh, any sea life or any human should have to uh, be around or be in the water with. Um, this is a a really bad sign for what's going on in the waters out there. To look at the effects of 200 million gallons of oil spewing into the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico back in 2010, you can't just look at how small businesses and residents were affected. British Petroleum has already spent $27 billion in claims payments, response, cleanup, and restoration. Let's look at the effects on those without a voice of their own. Four years out, what scientists at the National Wildlife Federation are finding isn't looking good. 900 bottlenose dolphins have been found dead or stranded in the oil spill area. Those found alive were underweight and anemic and showing signs of liver and lung disease. Sperm whales in the Gulf of Mexico are showing higher levels of DNA damaging metals than those elsewhere in the world. Loons that winter on the Louisiana coast have increasing concentrations of toxic oil compounds in their blood. Roughly 500 dead sea turtles have been found every year for the past three years in the area affected by the spill. Scientists say a chemical in oil from the spill has been shown to cause irregular heartbeats in bluefin and yellowfin tuna. And reproduction for oysters has remained low over large areas of the northern gulf, at least through the fall of 2012. When healthy, these guys filter a ton of water.